working my head. Not in my back. Better than in your neck. Oh, my back Old is woman, so I am. Try to relax your anus. <laughs> you tried that yet? <laughs> All the time. Try to relax oh, your time. anus. <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> Bro, I've been trying, man. I'm it's just... not relaxing. It's just not relaxing. This place has got me all keyed up here. <laughs> Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Den. Jeff, Kayla, Sean, and our guest this week. <laughs> Lead singer of Repentance, former lead singer of Product of Hate, Eye for an Eye, and uh, multiple other bands, and also one hell of a tattoo artist. Hey, thanks. You can Adam see, you can see his work. Is in the house. You can see his work right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Rocking it on her arm. What's welcome. up, bro? Yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank Thanks for guys. doing this, man. This I'm is excited. awesome. I love uh, I love doing these, and I think it's about time I'm on your guys' podcast. It's about damn time. For real. <laughs> we're we're so pumped that we get guests now, and it's just not our bullshit all the time. It's, yeah. It's really nice. <laughs> I'm sure it's less boring. Who was it that was falling asleep all the time? Maybe he's awake uh, yeah, now when he maybe. listens. Oh, well, fuck that guy anyway. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> hate is going to hate. Yeah, yeah I don't know what to do with that. They're not climbing into a basement every weekend and recording well, yeah. comedy gold, if you will. Mm. So it's new with you, bro? Um, not much. Uh, I got my tattoo shop that I've been doing for the last two years, and that's been keeping me busy like crazy. Um, I started to... This whole winter, I was expecting a lot of cancellations, uh, rescheduling. So I started packing people every day from Monday to Friday. I tried to take and some Saturdays. Um, but it turns out I ended up working all most of those weeks, you know, every day, every day. And then about March and April, no, maybe it was a little bit later than that. I want to say maybe end of April into May. My thumb started to get all messed up and shit. Oh, like, really? Yeah, like I, I had to have a wider grip for my machine. <clears throat> like damn near something this wide <laughs> as I'm tattooing. You know, because it helped with my thumb. Because when my thumb's on something smaller, I felt like it's just, I don't know. So like, fuck my thumb. Out. Yeah. I'm like, man, I need a goddamn break. And here I am still cranking them out. Uh, <laughs> I had to reschedule a client once because of my thumb. I felt bad because um, now he's got to wait till November. <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta yeah, do. I was surprised because I haven't gotten a tattoo in a long time or been in a tattoo shop. But uh, when you were doing Kayla's tattoo, I stopped in there and the old school guns where you had the the foot pedal, right? And yeah. now it's just all so the motor and everything's cordless. in the gun. Yeah, it's and just, cordless. Uh, if, well, we don't say gun; it's a machine. Okay. <laughs> if I got. If I called it a gun, oh my God, the tattoo world would Would come for you. That's yeah. like when I do the shoes and I say shoe instead of sneaker. They're coming for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just a cordless machine. Uh, they fi- they figured out a way to have the motor inside the machine and run it off a battery. So which, can you switch the batteries or is it yeah. you got to charge the whole machine? No, no. I got I When I bought the machine, it came with uh, one battery and then I clicked the option for two, which was more expensive, but it's smart because you know the first battery ain't going to last an entire no. two session. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get about seven hours off one battery, but the next one's always ready to go. So I'm And I've had it happen just the other day where the battery died, had to pop in the other one get back to work you know so it's the best thing that's ever happened to tattoos uh the, yeah the that's awesome well yeah it's it's got to be more control without having the wire and having yeah. to deal with you know the foot in, in the foot pedal you know right back in uh i would say 2005 when i first started tattooing and it was the old school machines the sound like a b you know mm-hmm. um i always would say I, I just want something that's like a pen uh so it's like right because that's like got to be easier. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm used to. Like that's I'm I've always drawn and to have like this thing with a weight on the back end of my hand. It was like it was harder to control. Like he figured it out over time, but when somebody finally came out 
with just a pen shape machine before it was even cordless. I was like, yes, bam, <laughs> That's got it. it. Yeah, I'm buying it today. Sold. Yep. And then they came out with the batteries, and then you just plug it into the top of the machine to eliminate the cord. I was like, yes, sold. I'm like, again, something I've always wanted, like to be free of all of that. No foot switch, no cord. Um, the needles is just a little cartridge. You just pop them in, pop, them yeah, in, pop them out, whatever. That's the dream right there for tattooers, <laughs> man. It cuts shit in half. Well, yeah, it makes your. I mean, obviously, you charge by the hour, so you'd be able yeah. to get more done. And absolutely, and also like going to conventions and stuff, it's less shit to bring with you, right? And uh, most of the stuff that I, well, I can't say most. All of the stuff, aside for any uh, the machine, is all disposable. So I just throw it one and done after you're That's done. Awesome, yeah, that is awesome. How did you? How did you get started originally? You said 2005. Was it a friend that got you into it, or you just... No, it was my mom and my step. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, throughout high school, um, that was like, I started drawing more skulls and more like tribal designs. Like, I, I always loved tattoos and tattoo designs, so I'd try to recreate my own. Like, when tribal was really huge, I'd try oh, to yeah. all sorts of stupid tribal. So, you just kind of started on canvas? Just on paper and sketchbooks, and my mom... Uh, I think I was about 20, 21 ish. She's like, you know what? You should try getting into tattoos. And I was like, if you buy me a tattoo kit or something, I'll try it. Yeah. I don't give a shit one way or the other to be a tattoo <laughs> artist. And she did. They bought it for me and fake skins and some generic ink. And uh, then before you know it, I have friends going, dude, you can just practice on me, man. Yeah, I feel like that's where you, yeah. your first clients are. <laughs> yeah. Student, Always your friends. They don't care about their body. They're just like, mark me up. I don't care. I just want a tattoo. And some of them won't let me cover it. They'll be like, no, I like this tattoo. It's your first one. I get to show you. Yeah, that's kind of a it. sentimental yeah. thing. Look right? how much better he's gotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was his first Well, I know. One. Yeah, my brother-in-law has got a lot of tattoos. Um John Tierney, yep. um, when he first started. So he's got a bunch of, and then he's like, oh, when you, later on, I'll I'll hook you up. And now he can't get a hold of him. <laughs> yeah, he's in Milwaukee well, now. Yeah, yeah, he's Actually, busy he's as busy shit. Busy but attitude. it's like, I, that's what that's the thing, though, is your friends. Yeah. Your friends come to you first, and you kind of practice on them, which is awesome, because yeah. it's like, that shit's forever. Yeah, absolutely. I know so many people who cheaped out on tattoos yeah. and i'm just like no it's yeah. a famous saying good tattoos aren't cheap and yep. cheap tattoos are good That's yeah but when you're young i feel like you don't care well no, like, no they just want tattoos because they know right. they're gonna look cooler whether it's good <laughs> yeah. work or bad work. yeah but then like oh they, shit you got a tattoo yeah and then later on they'll be like damn i need to get this covered up yeah <laughs> well it's like when you see the ones where it's like the picture of like angelina jolie Mm -hmm. The guy wipes yes. it off. It's, <laughs> it's like his hack job. Like, oh, what? Yeah. It looks like Down syndrome. Well, too, like you said yeah. with the tribe, there's so many, like, I feel like tattoos, like, I mean, every girl around our age has the lower back tattoo. Yeah, tattoos just stamp. go through the stages, right? Yeah. And then tribal was I mean, fucking huge for a while. And now the tramp stamp moved from the middle of the lo or the lower back to underneath the yes, titty. Yes, exactly. I feel like Is yeah, that you like can the age big, people. what's, what's yeah. the big thing now that you're seeing? Like, what's the new tramp stamp? Um, is it the under the boob? It's still, I'd, I'd say, under the boob. Um, and now, oh, tattoos sick. on the bridge of the nose with girls are a thing. Really? What? Yeah. what are they getting there? Just dainty little design type shit. Really? Across the bridge of the nose? Yeah. Like, yeah. No shit. I've seen that. Um, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> just because it's just <sighs> something you want to do. Like, like, what are they getting there, though? Like, um, dainty, but why? I don't know. Just, like, some weird, like, it depends on the design. Some some are, like, freaky, you know? So they want, like, more of that edgy-looking tribal -ish. Come here? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no words. <laughs> Come here. Plant the facial right where it says <laughs> it right there. Just a target. Yeah. Um, I want to get, Kayla wants to get Irish goggles oh my <laughs> yeah under yeah, both start eyes. that trend yep <laughs> well that's the weird thing too is you know when people the people that are you know oh, i can't get a job well because you look like you right. fell you fell asleep on the funny pages <laughs> like, right you like kids just draw on you the only thing yeah. is is you let them use a machine so yeah. it's permanent now um yeah i mean i've had a lot of people a lot of kids come in wanting like their necks or their hands blasted and that's it. They have no other tattoos. They're like, I just want this big rose right here. Yeah. I'm like, you know how stupid that's gonna look. If you Do you kind of as a as a 
as an adult and a tattoo artist, do you kind of do you say anything, or you're just like, no, I tell people straight up. Like the other day, I had a guy. Because I know obviously they're coming in. That's money in your hand. Right. It's kind of hard to be like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I've done that many times. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to, right? As yeah. your conscience. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. I, I feel like once I start to get to a point where I've gotten busier, then it's like, all right, now I need to be selective on who I take. Uh, but I will also tell my clients when they come in for a tattoo if their idea is stupid or if it's something that, we could both work on together or, you know, what have you not. I'm brutally honest Yeah. when it comes down to it. I'll tell you if it's going to work. I'll tell you if it's going to look dumb from the outsider's perspective. Um, like I said, I had a client the other day. He uh, wanted something for his kids, like a deer portrait for hunting. And he's like, oh, I showed him this image. And he's like, I really wanted the dates of my kids' birth dates. And I was like, really? I'm like, that's going to look so dumb. You're going to ruin this entire image by putting yeah. dates. And I'm like, I'm just sorry. I'm being brutally honest. Like, as an artist perspective, I'm for the artwork, not for, like, typing out names and dates. Yeah. yeah. It can yeah. be safe for another spot. But Well, uh, that's cool because, you like, if you want that, I respect you. Go somewhere else. But this is what yeah. I want to do as an artist, well, which so is cool as shit. As, uh, as we're doing the tattoo, and the way I designed it had uh, bullets uh, like the silhouette of the skin. I left the skin open, but it was in the shape of bullets, like kind of a design mm -hmm. on the ankle. And as we're tattooing, he, he was like, all right, I'm not going to do the dates. That's fine. And then halfway through the tattoo, as I'm thinking about the dates, because I know that's what he really wanted, and I feel <laughs> yeah. bad. Right. Um, he goes, hey, man, I'm not going to lie. I really need those dates in this tattoo. It just means too much. I'm like, all right, I already got it figured out. In each one of these bullets, I will put... Each date. I was like, how many kids you got? And he goes, four. I was like, all right, cool. I'll just add one more bullet at the bottom. Yeah. And I'll put their dates in each one of the bullets. Um, but here's the thing. I'm going to finish this tattoo first, get my pictures. Then, then I will I'll do, add your dates. Then I'll add your yeah. dates because I am not ruining this tattoo with your dates <laughs> and posting it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, bro, that's totally cool. I'm like, I'm glad we both get what we want out of it then. Yeah. Um, now get over here and take these fucking pictures and we'll get these dates out and get you the fuck out of here. Yeah. Well, it's a weird thing too, as an, as an artist, I'm sure people bring you in pictures and say, I want this picture. Some, but some. then lately I haven't had people who are really, uh, uh, picky about it. I've had people wanting specifically the picture, uh, and I'll turn them down. Or yeah, because be like, you want to copy. I mean, you want to do something original. You kind of go, you can go off of their idea, but you don't want to copy someone's art, you know? No, and there's a lot of tattoo artists that will do that and not care, but I, I don't know. If I see a tattoo and they come to, or if they have a picture and it's a tattoo, I won't do it. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll do something like that, but I'm right. not, this is already on somebody. You do know that. You want that same tattoo. Like, that is, like, the worst thing any tattoo owner or whatever you call yeah. it. Yeah. Should I would not want somebody having the same thing as me. So I got to I got to ask though. So what's worse? Somebody that comes in and asks for like I this is the tattoo I want, this exact one or somebody like me that's like here's 17 pictures, please figure this out. <laughs> I, I have no that. idea. <laughs> I prefer the 17 pictures, please figure it out because then I could be like, "All right, well, I'm going to use like four of these ideas and make this all one tattoo or just use the one and just go off that. Cause I always feel so bad. I'm like, I don't, I'm not artsy no. at all. I so mean, you, <laughs> I depend on you too. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, I like somebody to give me that kind of a direction. Like I like all these things. You do you. All right. I'll make, <laughs> yeah. I, make I, these things yeah. kind of come together. Right. Right. Um, sometimes they ask for, I have clients that want to pack in a bunch of shit. I want, you know, this, and I want that, and I want this, and I want that. And then, you know, I'm like, dude, what do you want, a collage on your arm? <laughs> like, there's yes. no flow to it. It's very yeah. random objects. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, I can't. Well, it's like all those little tattoos that, are, you know, all the, the younger kids are getting now, just like random yeah. pieces mm -hmm. of whatnot. Hey, I have a butterfly here, and then there's a lion here, and then... <laughs> It reminds me of a refrigerator. Yeah. Yes. yes all the different magnets. And yeah. Just like our refrigerator down here. Yes. yes. 100%. So many things all over it. Is the Chinese lettering still a thing? No. <laughs> that was huge. I did. All yeah. right. So I want to say this is probably back in 2016. 
15 or 16. So this kid, very emo looking, comes into the shop and he wants Asian writing or Japanese. I don't know what kind of Japanese or Chinese writing down his neck. Um, and I forgot what the words or the quote was, but he came in and he had it written this way. So I had to figure mm-hmm. out how to make it this way. So I yeah. had to like stack things on top. And here I fucked up the tattoo. <laughs> I cut one of the Chinese symbols in half and put it one on <laughs> oh, And no. I tattooed it on him. And I told him before I did the tattoo, I was like, listen. I'm not a freaking dictionary for Chinese writing, and you need to come to me with this ready to go yeah. the way it needs to be done and make sure it is correct because mm-hmm. I'm here to stick it on you, and I don't sit here and look it up and do all of that. Yeah. I'm not going yeah. to do that. And he's like, yeah, dude, no problem. As soon as I did that and I fucked it up, he comes back in. You messed up my neck. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I, I don't <laughs> I care. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, bro. I told you it was a horrible <laughs> idea, and I told you that I... I knew it was going to be a pain in the ass trying to figure them all out from this way to this way. Cause they were all so close together as it yeah. was. I didn't know what symbol was what. And when I put it on and fixed it, like, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Did he even know? Did he even say no, what he it had meant? No idea. <laughs> Just look cool. Probably says, like, no, no. I mean, he penis. knew what it, he looked it up. He knew what it was deep throat, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he went home that night and obviously realized I miss, you know, placed the, one of the words or symbols. I don't know what you'd call it, but, well, that's the thing, too, is, yeah, they might on, like, the wall have the Chinese lettering and say when it's under, when it says underneath it. That ain't really what it means. Like, if You'd you, have to do some research just to I double s- check. I still pray that the one back here says what I think it says. That uh, my I have siblings Chinese are writing on me. I have an oh, all-in-one 1999 tattoo. It's all in one and Chinese. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, me and uh, Alex Lackner and a buddy of ours got all the same tattoo. <laughs> oh, I, drew nice. it, I drew it at Las Vegas Restaurant on the fucking, what do you call Place it? Placement. Yeah, that's where I designed the tattoo, and we got it like two weeks later. Yeah, we always talked about doing the Ditka. The, the glasses. The Mike Ditka oh, on the yeah. thigh, yeah. yeah. If he you, wants to get you on top of your idea. <laughs> if you get a leg which, tattoo, I swear one? to God. Which idea? Yeah. The right hand. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm gonna, <laughs> I just want a stick figure. Why? My right hand man. <laughs> my, right, my right hand man. That's genius. <laughs> Jeez. He had, did you see that somewhere? Or did you think of that? That's it's a, Taylor Lewan, who is a uh, former football player. Played, oh, okay. It was a tackle, and he's just like, they're going through his, all of his tattoos. He's he's uh, covered. Yeah, covered. And he's like, they're like, oh, what's your favorite one? And he just goes, my right hand man. <laughs> That's genius. Sean, you, I was an asshole. You could have taken my appointment for today. And got your right hand. Oh, yeah. Because I had, to, I had <laughs> to cancel mine. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> you could have taken mine. Oh, you know what? Yeah, for the All right, 30 so seconds that would take. Here's the thing. Yeah. No, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I don't want to. <laughs> you <laughs> surely can. This is off air type shit. All right. <laughs> gotcha. Save it for later. Uh, okay. Afterwards. What's the, you remember what's that the craziest <laughs> one you've done? And there, I've done some nipples. Uh, a girl's. Sleep. What do they get on the nipples? Um, it was. Uh, Hold men, on, say it slower. Nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I did this girl's nipples. <laughs> Put this mandala around them. <laughs> <laughs> the mandala. Yeah, I like them. The mandala, like flowers. Oh no, oh. shit! Yeah, huh. I've seen the spider webs. Not up close. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, in porn, that's, that's one's uh, that one's <laughs> been shut up, Ronnie Rotten. <laughs> There's another God. porn star that copied her and did the same thing. Um, Son of a bitch, I'm old. You can tell by my porn star references. Go Christy Mac. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> these are all like yeah, retired, yeah. <laughs> retired. They're yeah. like doing gilf shit now. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of the loop over here. I'm gonna have to Google these ladies. Come on, Can't Kayla, wait. get with it. Um. I'm trying to think of another crazy one I've done. I remember a group of frat guys coming in, getting their asses tattooed. And it was three numbers and a <laughs> roof, a house, you know, a roof with like a little. Oh, so, so it was like Phi Beta Kappa yeah, on the roof? Yeah, probably. You no, know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't there. It was like the house number. It was number. just the house number, yep. And I had to shave four asses <laughs> and put Aww. four, you know, I had to. Do yeah. you like charge up for that? Oh, You're I, like, I taxed him for it. I said, You guys do know your own charging a bro. little more. S-tax and then all their girlfriends sure. are there oh. laughing. And I'm like, Why couldn't you girls be the ones getting the ass tattoos? Yeah, couldn't no. you shave before? 
No, I mean, they probably could have. Like, right before, they probably could have just shaved their own yeah. asses. Bro, Which, uh, I feel like they're yeah. shaving no each one, other's asses no all the time. <laughs> Isn't that part of the initia- <laughs> initiation? I could, I could see now that one of them would probably nick, and it'd just be a huge gash in the middle of their <laughs> ass cheek, <laughs> and then it'd be like, I can't tattoo you there. Not today. <laughs> On the other cheek. So you, you haven't had any of uh, the old butthole tattoos? No butthole big, tattoos. Those are, Not yet. No you're still butthole tattoos. St- still, still going in your journey. Yeah. I I'm, tattooed a... Uh, this. All right, so this couple comes in, and this girl's like, I want to get my boyfriend's name right above my vagina. All right. You sure you want that? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I want that with him there. Um, of course she wants it. Um, so she goes into <laughs> no the station, problem. and as I'm setting up and... Getting ready to get going. Actually, fuck it. I think I already had started. Either way, he's like, yeah, man. The last girlfriend I had, I got her to get my name tattooed no on her, too. No fucking way. Oh, I'm just like, oh, that's oh. funny, man. Oh. Yeah. This dude just and stamping just bitches? continued yeah. to let you do that. Yeah. I've been like, fuck it, black it out. Yeah. Black I was, it out. You know, if you, would, <laughs> if you would have walked off to the bathroom, I was going to tell her, be like, just so you know, I do cover-ups. <laughs> Yeah, I can make this look really cool (laughs) later on. Don't take care of this Uh. tattoo. Just let it fade. Let it scab. Uh. Let it get infected. Just, (laughs) just let it come off some way, shape, or form. I don't. You know what though? I don't feel bad for those girls. No, because they're stupid. Why'd you do that? Yep. Why'd you do that? You didn't think. Like we are married, and I still would not tattoo your name on me. Absolutely not. I would never get Kayla's name on me. Like that. No, it's still weird for me when you say shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope not. Yeah. <laughs> not this Kayla. His Kayla. His Kayla. He's I got, got a Kayla. Kayla. Too. Yeah, we locked him down. Yeah. Kayla's are the best. Sean needs to find a Kayla. You do need to find a Kayla. I don't trust you, bitches. What? I wouldn't trust any of them. I know his rude. Kayla and I know you. Uh-huh. That's rude. My phone just dropped. Oh, pick it up, honey. Yeah, I. I've known Gilly for a while now. <laughs> Yeah, it's been some time. And uh, it was the first time I met Gilly was an open jam at a place called Papa Gus's. And it was a bunch of blues guys, old blues dudes playing. (laughs) Yeah. And then these five metal heads get up and just start shredding. (laughs) And I'm like, this is the wildest fucking shit I've seen in a long time. I feel like we woke the place up. Like we people would stop and be like, holy shit. Yeah, like Yeah, because all of a sudden just a just shredding yeah. guitar riff would come out. Is that when, uh, cause you were with the Rathbones for a while, right? That was, that was well them. before. Well Rath- before. Yeah. Well before. Well, I didn't know cause we all went to high school together. So I yeah. don't know if that's how the band originally started. Um, no, it was me and my buddy Alex, um, and a couple guys from central that played in bands. And actually Aaron Spindler's uncle owned Papa Gus's. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how we got Oh, no shit. Band. But still can't believe that they let me in, regardless of the fact, every Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. Open, it was like open jam or open mic Wednesdays. Oh, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, like I said, when we were talking about it upstairs, but like when the night that Dimebag got shot, the, the day after the open jam was there, and they did like a whole tribute to yeah. Dimebag that night, and it was awesome. Yeah. What the fuck is Dimebag? Dime. What? <laughs> Dimebag Daryl was the guitar player for Pantera. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm well, sorry. It's you're not. What's a your favorite head. Pantera song? I don't. I don't walk. I just don't say walk. walk. Just say walk. <laughs> <'Cause that's laughs> I thought you were telling me to walk, and Spect. I was like, okay, that's fair. You would, you would know <laughs> some of their walk. songs. Yeah, you would. Them. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like I would hear like I know. Artists. I'm bad with that too. I'm awful with artist names. Names of songs, but you play a song and I can sing you every single word of it. Like, I'm just really bad at it. But I, I don't I, know. I am not going to lie. When I was in my car one day and I had whatever serious, whatever the metal station is on yeah, serious liquid metal, liquid metal, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> man, this song sounds really familiar. I looked down and it was Product of Hate. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> like, oh, shit, because I know those guys and I have the <laughs> album at my house. <laughs> Was it Perry Mason? No, it wasn't. It was a. Uh, was it an original song? Maybe? Yeah, it was. Oh wow! It, I think it might have been uh, blood uh, blood coated. Oh no! Oh, no. Well, yeah, I would say if if anything, it might have been Monster. Yeah, it was Monster because yeah. the video just came out. Yep, it was one of the uh, the singles, I guess. But they they played a shit ton of Perry Mason and mm-hmm. a shit ton of fucking Cult of Personality. Yeah, and I hate 
both of those songs. <laughs> now, I don't mind Perry Mason. Like, as it is, I don't like playing it live, but on the album, I was like, yeah, man, this. I thought I did a pretty good job. And this job. was a product of hate? Yeah, it was, yeah. When I was a product of hate. Um, was that your most successful so far? I mean, I don't think so. I'm, I mean, I did tours with that band. I haven't toured with Repentance yet, but the shows for Repentance have been astronomically a bit bigger, I yeah. guess you could say. More packed. Now, I just want to ask quick. Now, when you're forming a band, like obviously you've been in multiple bands, are these just, are they like random people? Do you like put out flyers or is it like you find a drummer and he knows a guitarist? Like how do you put, a band together you've been in multiple bands huh. like how, how i'm just curious on how oh. a band like forms so usually you want to be a part of the music uh what is it like the um the music scene in the area get to know the bands that are playing and find out the best musicians you can out of those bands be friends with them play shows with them i mean the, the thing is is you got to be good at what you do and uh, YouTube is a great way to get found to get into bands by doing that. I think it helps. Um, it's hard to start a band it, unless you're young, unless you're a kid, then you yeah. could jam with the kids in school. And I feel, it's yeah, like, I feel like a lot together. of bands in high school, yeah. you know, form and that you way. Know, when it came with product of hate. So I was jam. I went over to Mike's house and jammed with Cody and Mike and our friend Kendon and his cousin Keenan. And then I didn't like the music, went home, forgot my hat there. So I had to go back to get it. <laughs> and Mike goes, let's jam. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> All right, dude, because I'm not going to be a dick and not jam. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to jam. And it was a complete 180. They were playing like Lamb of God and Pantera. And I'm like, this is exactly what More I want to play. Um, and then I started playing with them. Then we got Gene, Mark. And then, bam, Product of Hate went on. And my buddy Sean Glass got us signed to Napalm Records. Got them hooked up with Lanny Cabinets and ESP Guitars. Um, helped us get on a couple tours. And then towards the end, when the second album was coming out, we had already recorded the album, I think, since 2018. 2017, 2018. And I kept saying it shows, the oh, album's going to come out next summer, or this summer, this fall, this winter. Yeah. And I guess, guys, I am so done was saying that this album's coming out because it's not. It's not coming out. And I'm not saying anything until we actually have a definitive date, have the masters done, have the pressing. Was and this just you guys doing it we by were, yourselves? Yeah, or were you after the first album, um, the label wanted three new songs um, when our contract was up. We sent them three songs. They were like, we want three more. And we said, no, nah, we're not going to send them anything. And we just cut ties with the label. They didn't want to help us out anyways. Um and pretty much the story of the music industry yeah so we put out the second just album. take and not give yeah they wanted to put their name on our stuff and hope that we would somehow uh just pop off organically just organic yeah mm -hmm. but they didn't want to spend the money to get us on tours with good bands because you have to spend money to go on tours so mm -hmm. if i wanted if or if Product of Hate, let's say, wanted to go on tour with Devil Driver, Devil Driver at the time was charging ten grand to go on tour with him. I'm not paying ten grand to go on tour with him. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. If the label wants to front it, sure, eventually we got to pay him back over time. Yeah. But they didn't want to do that. Um, so anyways, we get the second album out, and then like about a couple months later, I quit the band. And I just didn't see it going places, at least good places because yeah by that point 2021 our last tour was 2017 and it was a it was a bad tour i mean it wasn't a bad tour as in like show wise i mean it wasn't the greatest but it wasn't the worst um band morale yeah we fought we got in a huge fight everybody got in a huge physical altercation going oh, no 70 shit. to 80 down the expressway going <laughs> to fucking michigan from our indiana show and a couple of members of the band were hammer drunk, just acting a fool. And uh, one of them got their asses kicked pretty bad. I did not do any physical damage to them. I just choked them out. Um, <laughs> shit was no, no. go to sleep. It was just a bad news thing. So eventually, that to where I was like, man, that was just bad. You, we all need to not drink. Like I think drinking was a huge issue. Mm -hmm. if, if there was no drinking, this shit would have been great. 
Um, and then we decided to continue the band and work together and get through it. And, uh, I just kind of lost it. I don't know. In 21, it just kind of like, I don't see this going anywhere. And if it does get somewhere, I feel like we're going to kill each other. And then, yeah. and then we're going to quit the band. We're all going to walk away <clears throat> hating each other. I would rather just say, you know what? I love you guys still. I'm done. I'm just tapped. I, I feel it's an obligation and it's, it's just the fun. Wasn't there. Anymore. Yeah, It wasn't there, but I, it's not that I didn't, I didn't hate them. I did not like them. I love them all. I shared some really fucking crazy experiences with those guys, but, uh, I just knew it was, I, I'd rather do tattoos. So it's I, just you and you, <laughs> right? I mean, I came to the point where I just want to freaking do tattoos and just be happy doing that. And if I'll keep the options open for any other opportunities. And then of course, like a month or two later, Alex invites me over and he's like, dude, listen to Sean's new band. I'm recording it. So he shows me the song, which is now down in the water. And I was like, dude, this verse, it's like, (laughs) it just makes you want to bob your head and punch somebody. And I was like, I need to sing on this. I don't even care if it's uh, gibberish or nonsense. I just want to hear vocals over this guitar part because it sounds mean. (laughs) Yeah. So Alex, I can't let you do that. You got to talk to Sean. And then Sean's like, yeah, dude, go for it. You know, I don't care. And uh, next thing you know, they're like, yeah, you're the only guy for the job. And I'm like, oh, fucking A. <laughs> like, so now you're back in. So I started playing, yeah, with Repentance. Um, and I want to say I started with them in August of 21. Yeah, the end of August. So I, I, I left Product of Hate in May and started playing with Repentance in August. It looked bad because it looked like I literally quit this band for that. Yeah, I, at right. least in those in Mike and everybody's eyes, they're probably like, "Fuck you, Adam, you're a piece of shit." Mike's like, "I thought you said you were never playing in a band again." I said, "I never said that. I just said I didn't want to play right now." <laughs> yeah, with this one. Um, well, the stars aligned, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I. At the end of the day, like everybody's got to look out for themselves first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And no, I I was tired of doing something that was, I guess, kind of helping other people out, not myself. Like I was, I was kind of burying myself by trying to help other people. I don't know how to explain it. You know, I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was going to get anywhere. It wasn't like passion project maybe for you. You're just kind of along for the ride. um, Well, with repentance, I was like, you know what? I was kind of like tapped out with music altogether. Even when I, first started playing with repentance i was like you know what i'm just gonna freaking ride this train until it's done i don't even care if this band makes it if it doesn't whatever um i had that mentality and it as soon as i started jamming with these guys and getting to know the these new band members and it was really weird going from that switch to to not knowing three other people in the band Mm -hmm. i'm like oh i got a get through you know i hate meeting people but yeah. at the same time that's like kind of going to a different high school like yeah. you're making I you're the new kid on the block making new friends again kind of i i knew what to expect because sean <laughs> gave me like a heads up on how each of these guys were he's like they're really cool um the drummer and the lead player are uh they're really nice they're not like uh they're they don't do drugs they don't get drunk and the bass player is the same way. He likes to smoke his weed, whatever, and, you know. Which a, most play, bass players, I think. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> slopping the bass. Fuck yeah. Uh, playing the bass and just smoking rigs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I had my first practice with them, and I was like, this is kind of weird, not seeing my friends that I played with for 14 years. Mm-hmm. But it it quickly all clicked. And I was like, damn, like, there's no fighting, there's no BS, but we have not toured yet, so I can't say that yet. <laughs> and I mean, that's when you really know somebody. What's is, usually this, you said you, your last band, you fight, like, what's usually the culprit of the touring fights is just... Just the drinking. Just the, the drinking yeah, and the... they get, like, um, they'll get too shit-faced, and then uh, an argument will start, and then it'll shift from one to the other, and... You know, and before you know it, you're trying not to punch the other one. Um, You just want everybody to shut the fuck up and be quiet Mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. 
and you're just trying to get it's to like the taking next a city. long road trip with your kids yeah i know you do oh, want to no. punch most of them in the face very quickly mm-hmm. so oh yeah we've I feel all that we all wanted to hit each other i remember being uh trapped in arizona whatever's coming what is it is it arizona or is it new mexico into california Arizona. Arizona. Okay, so we were in Arizona. We were by the uh, big ass dinosaur, big T Rex that was in the Pee Wee Herman movie. Oh hell yeah! We we're like, that's a T Rex. <laughs> Let's stop and get pictures by it. Oh yeah! And all of a sudden, we're walking back to the van, and our trailers like this, like cocked, like sideways. And we're like, oh, but we didn't know it was like that. We thought the wheel well was bent because mm-hmm. the way it looked. And we're like, who sat on the wheel well, bent the damn trailer, whatever. <laughs> so then we get up closer and we notice the leaf spring is just hanging off. Oh, shit. A leaf spring snapped oh. on the one side. And there's really nothing holding that side of the uh, axle on the trailer besides that like leaf spring in the U-bolt, which is gone. Um, so we had to spend the night in that car, uh, that gas station. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and so the, the night was fine. Throughout the night, we... We were just hanging out. It was not bad. But the next day into the morning, that went into the afternoon. It was 19 hours we spent in this parking lot. And it was super hot. So hot. And we would take turns going to the Burger King because it was air conditioning. We wanted to kill each other. Yeah. Then the freaking guy finally shows up. How many up. people were in the band? Uh, we had six people with us because a merch guy. Um, and the guy who fixed the car... The shop that he was coming from was an hour away. That was the closest shop. So the parts that he had to get, he would drive back an hour and then an hour back. <laughs> um, he comes back at early in the morning or in the morning finally to fix it. And he's got this blanket. He goes, you open up your van. All right. Sets it down. And it's a bong. And he's got <laughs> weed. <laughs> and he goes, I wasn't sure if you guys wanted some of this. And we're like, oh, my God. Fuck yeah. All right. So then we're all smoking this weed. We all get in the van. And we went from wanting to kill each other. As soon as you smoke weed, no. man, it's a good thing nothing crazy happened. We're safe. We're fine. Like, we're cool. Let's just get to the show. That's all that matters. All of a sudden, logic kicks in. Yeah, yeah. It was like, wow, I wish I had this documented from like 30 minutes ago. We wanted to punch each other in the mouth, you know, to... I love you, man. <laughs> You're the best, man. A little bit of that green goddess gets in there. Well, plus, probably happy. just happy that yeah. your shit was fixed, too. It, it's a good you can get th- back on the road. Yeah, and we had to get to the next show, which I think we were... I don't know if we were late for it. We might have made it on time. I don't know. We've had a lot of the van breaking down and shit like that. The story of most fucking musicians yeah. starting out. What I find crazy is you're so soft spoken and you, yeah. just, your music is just screaming. Yeah. I don't know. We just saw we were talking upstairs. We just saw this band uh I don't remember what it was Boys anyway. Boys of Fall. Boys of Fall, but I looked at their schedule and it was day after day and this guy's up there just and I'm like if, if just from that I'm hoarse. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. do you is that like something you train or is just you just have it to just... Oh. Yeah, you just kind of... Uh, I figured it out. Or is it a different way where it doesn't hurt your vocals? Because um, I don't know how to do it, but I just I can just... Where did you lose your like, voice oh, when you first shit. started? Were you losing your voice all the no, time? No, I wasn't really losing the voice. Just uh, gargling honey? I would... Uh, no, it's, it's all from it's down here. Juice. It's all from it's all down diaphragm. here. It's yeah. all Yeah. So I remember when Mudvayne's Dig first came out. And I love that song. I was like, this song is so badass. So good. And uh, again, Alex, me and him were seriously, it, Kayla thinks we were gay at one point. I'm like, no, we were not. <laughs> like, <laughs> We're just best friends, you Just bitch. admit yeah. it. She's just like, you know you guys it. did shit. I'm like, nah. She's crazy like that, but it's all right. I still don't you, I was going to say, don't you dare talk about Kayla like uh, that. She's calling me gay. Well, I mean, if the shoe fucking fits. Okay? Um, I mean, have, so, you, have, have you seen your mustache? I mean, what? Bella said she that does that. She mustache. said the other day, I look like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> but that's a pretty good compliment, I think. Yeah. I but, don't if care, I'll take it. but if the shoe fits. But if the shoe fits. So, well, me and Alex were getting it on. I learned how to scream <laughs> while listening to Mudvayne Dig. And he would tell me whether to go lower or higher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I bet he did. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you'd I mean, be surprised I, how good semen 
coast to the throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, yeah, I figured out how to like do the low screams and the highs. And uh, before you know it, I was singing in the band Ruined. Um, but then, yeah, what, when it came to Product of Hate and playing every day, that was a whole different ball game. But it mainly sucked because I got sick the first half a tour or I got sick halfway through. It seemed like that happened almost every tour. Um, there was only a couple where I didn't get sick, and it was a great run. But when you're coming off a cold, I had to have Kayla um, call in prescription in California. It was a second. This was a different time in California again. <laughs> And fuck California. Yeah. Always <laughs> going in sick. <laughs> sick is a dog. Uh, so she got me prescriptions. We slept over at our buddy Steve from Skin Lab. He let us sleep over at his place, barbecued. Um, so I got a day off of rest, and that was nice. And then got my prescription, headed out, had to play another show in Sacramento, feeling like garbage. And I had a thing of honey and a thing of water. Yeah, it was a freaking mis- miserable time. Um, I don't know what it is with California, but yeah. it definitely makes it hard when you're sitting it's there. It is. Yeah. It's all the bum shit in the road. The bum <laughs> bum Seattle shit. has a lot of bum shit that I seen. Went into an yeah. alley and you just see that they use it as a toilet because you got shit spots. On the wall, oh. and it's just Ooh, it's like it's just shit, and then fell shit, and it's falling. Like <laughs> They're streets. shooting it. Yeah, no, yeah. not shooting. Like they'd rust their ass up against the wall, standing, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it just like hit the brick of the wall Ew. or whatever, and then just slide down. Like that's what it looked like. I'm Very like, guys, uh. do you guys know we're in a a, a public restroom? A right public now? restroom. Very public restroom. And they're like, so gross. yeah, dude, now that you mention it, let's get the hell out of here. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, let's, let's do that. Go. Seattle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, there's some nasty-ass uh, cities, though. What's one of the craziest places that you went? Maybe you showed up to the venue and you're like, oh, Jesus. Uh, Maybe in a good or a bad way, Flint, I'm asking. Flint, Michigan um, is scary. It's good only, water. Yeah. <laughs> the Don't drink the water. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard so many horror stories from Flint, Michigan, and um, we were chilling outside the place after our show with Mushroom Head, and the bass player, I forget his fucking name, god damn it, um, anyways, he goes, oh, this is right where I got shot. I'm like, well, what? <laughs> I took a stray bullet here one time. I'm like, why are we outside back? hanging out? Yeah. Like, why are we here right now? And Mark is like, I'm going to go to the strip club. And they're, the rest of the other bands are like, me. go get your guy right now. This is not the town to be no. walking alone in. All right. And if he goes to that strip club, he's going to find trouble. Guaranteed. Yeah. And so we finally got Mark to come back to the van. Yeah, that was a scary moment. I was like, Mark, you don't understand. We have to show I can't tomorrow. ever meet Mark. No. Mark and I can never meet. Yeah. Hey, I'm down for a strip club or two, you know. But no, because Mark and I won't get shitty that. shitty ass. Not areas. in Flint, Michigan. No, but that's me. That is 100% me. Oh, my God. You'd be raped. I'm, mm. I'm getting killed, for sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Or throwing up on that, and then you'd be working there for the rest of your life. <laughs> I don't Turning know. tricks. Well, maybe. I don't know. That um, might be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mama's got to make the money. Got to make the money. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of, uh, they're, Se- or not Seattle, um... Cincinnati was kind of sketchy. Uh, and nothing too crazy, though. There, Mark almost got stabbed again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mark. This feels like a oh, I kinda repeating Mark. pattern with Mark. Yeah, he. I remember t- one time he was telling me he's walking to the gas station and this dude's like, hey, man, can I have a cigarette? Because he just saw Mark had bought a pack of cigarettes. He goes, yeah, you can go walk in there. They're selling them. <laughs> and he goes... I don't have any money, man. Can I bum one off you? He goes, no, you can't bum one off me. And the guy's like, fuck you, motherfucker. You're in my city. <laughs> like, oh, I'm glad I'm, I was like, I'm glad I'm not with you. I'm, there's, so there's a cigarette tax in your city? <laughs> like, I don't know. Just a bum on the street wanting to uh-huh. bum a cigarette off Mark, but he wasn't having it. I'd make him do a trick. Yeah. Oh, and he does. Jeff does. I'll never forget when the first and only time. I feel like you overtook me to Chicago. You made a guy do it. You really he, this bomb. He wanted a cigarette. I said, "What are we gonna do for it?" Yeah, and I, I said, "Tell me a joke." Like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Well, no, do you that. gotta. 
Yeah, so he told me a joke, and I said, it was good. It was a good one, too. I was like, here you go. Here's two. Here's two. Here's two. Now keep her moving. (laughs) Exactly. That was Jeff's motto in Vegas. How you doing? You tell him. Yep. Yep. Well, because she's trying to, you know. I made friends with all the She loves the pound. You know, she loves a good comeback story. She likes saving dogs, and she loves saving humans as well. Yeah. I didn't want to save them. I just wanted to hear their stories. A good Kayla. comeback story, like the one Kim had Kardashian. a sequins yeah. hat. You got to come, come on her back. <laughs> she got to cover her back in that video. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, Kayla loves. She loves. Good. She Look at what she did to me. She turned me around. She yeah. made a real man out of me. Holy He'd shit. He'd still be DJing in Kenosha. <laughs> Just drowning in Working pussy. Thank Western. God you pulled me out of there. God, you pulled me out of that pussy pool. I, I, honestly, I saw a lot of so the pussy wet. that you were drowning in, and <laughs> not that I'm a confident woman, but you're fucking welcome. No, uh, slump busters. Uh, that was go happening. Through a Got some wretched ass hose up in yeah. there. Just because you fucked, just because you fucked five twos, it doesn't make him a ten. Oh, <laughs> I had it on the them all in the room together. Yeah, yeah that's at the same the time. <laughs> I pulled a 10 oh. last night. <laughs> really? Yeah, there's yeah, five of them. Five it was a lot of work. <laughs> God damn. I put in overtime. Oh. My hip. So sore. <laughs> that reminds me of that video. What video? <laughs> that angry fucking truck driver. Remember I showed you the video where oh, he was Jesus. playing out all the sex positions? He's oh, like, yeah. My hip. He's like, next time. He's like, I've always told my wife just to ride through that pain. He's like, but now I'll never do it again. Never. That hip cramp. <laughs> <laughs> to ride through that pain. Oh, it was funny. Actually, my favorite videos are the ones where the boyfriends have the stopwatches and they're making their girls get on top to and like the, the dry hump, the pillow or whatever. And he's like, well, they can do that. And he's like, keep going harder, yeah. faster. <laughs> just, they're, <laughs> they're, they're just so tired. They're just sweating. just out of breath. Oh. So, yeah, now put yourself in my shoes. Yeah. Okay, but then that guy, he did, like, when he was, like, he had his legs up, and he's like, now I understand why women are out of breath. It's the position. Can't fucking yeah. breathe. And, <laughs> and then he's like, their, 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 ear, their knees go to their ears. He's yeah. like, oh, God. He's like, I can't, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got the... <laughs> <laughs> then he got on There's top. He's like, oh, this is great. <laughs> you just hold on. Uh, Yep. You just hold on, baby. Yeah. Hold on, this monkey cock. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Gilly, what's the uh, oh, tattoo shit. studio? Name of your tattoo studio. It is called Insidious Studios uh, in Burlington, Wisconsin. Uh, it's not a bad little joint. It's cute. It's a sweet setup, yeah. I like yeah. it in there. <laughs> it's probably not a good word. It's very nice. It's um, cute. It's got I really know. good wall decorations. No, <laughs> I, I it's a love. Cool shop. As soon as I, I walked I in, I was like, cool. "Wow, the decor!" <laughs> I always get a lot of compliments on the couches and the chairs. The velvet, yeah, couches. it looks dope as yes. shit in there. Um, that was like the first thing. If I ever opened up a <clears> shop, I was like, I want it kind of like on a gothic vibe, you know, um, with foliage and shit. And I finally kind of got to, a chance to do that. Um, not to its full capacity and not to what I would prefer. I had a health inspector come in the other day and I said, man, I really wish I could make these walls dark. Like just, I want this to be a, a kind of a more darker lit ominous feeling to it and more intimate, I guess, but I can't, it's got to be brightly lit. It's got to have light walls, white ceilings. I didn't even um, know nothing about it. So the health inspector comes in and says that. Yeah. They're like, what if yeah. you put up all the lights? <laughs> What do you, to keep it light, like you paint. The- oh, it doesn't matter because it's got a the code oh, to be so up to dumb. code. Yeah, and it's not from her. It's not by her reasoning. Uh, it's state. Yeah, it's the uh, well, more so Burlington Racine yeah. County. And she's like, you know what? You could always bring it up to them. Um, she gave me a, a sheet to go to look through about all the rules and all regulations and statutes and all that. And she's like, it doesn't hurt. So that way. Um, there's an open forum. You can mention your case to them. I'm like, yeah, it's stupid. I was like, if there's, cause it's for blood, they want, you need yeah. to be able to see the blood. Mm. And I was like, listen, if there's blood on the ceiling, if there's blood on the wall, <laughs> hell, if there's even blood on me, it's straight up murdering somebody. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like there is no blood that ever gets off. Shouldn't be splattering. This area, you know, like the only blood that you ever see is on the paper towel. That's it. 
or like the pad do I set the paper towel on with the rest of the ink? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm like, it never have I had anybody squirt blood onto a wall. <laughs> like that's you need to close the, <laughs> you need to close a tattoo shop down if yeah. that's the case. Yeah, if they're like, going that deep on a tattoo that you're right. getting. But you're I do feel veins. like I do feel like county but state overall is just that fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, like they said, don't understand. They're not they tattoo do. artists. We they sat we sat through a town board meeting in our town. We, oh, it was horrible. Yeah, oh. I'm gonna pour shot. No, but like when it comes to anything health wise, like and so yeah, I feel like the tattoo shops fall under that, right? Because you're you're dealing with <laughs> bodily fluids, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah. But like, yeah, state is absolutely ridiculous. Like the expectations, like what they think is gonna happen, is just so. Dumb. Well, they got rules. They got a fucking uh, yeah, stupid abide by fucking them. rules. Right. And then when you open up a business, they all want you to pay, 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 pay. I got to freaking pay so you much. You don't shit. get to do what you want, no. but you pay me yep. to do what I want you to do. Pretty much. I know <laughs> you want to run a business? Well, Gilly it's going to cost you property rules. tax for no. having a business here. Um, <laughs> you, do you need no, help? that's yeah. mint. That is mint. You yeah, don't I don't want. want yeah, he doesn't want the mint. I want no part of that shit. That's so I brushed sad. my teeth earlier. I don't need it now. Yeah. Do you want just the? You want to try just the Patron? No, no, nope. no, no. How about just the rum chata? I could cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, rum chata, I go. could do. Bring me back let's to go. breakfast. Let's go. <laughs> rum what if Thanks again for doing this, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're really happy. Like I said, we're we're so. While I pour see. these. Where can uh, where can people oh, yeah. follow you? Tattoos. Follow your band. Um, you, you can, can follow mostly on Facebook or you can, Instagram. You can follow Repentance on Instagram and Facebook. Um, check us out on Spotify, Title. Uh, what's the other one? YouTube, iTunes, Amazon Music, all of the streaming services. All the things. The old yep. Spotify. Uh, for my tattoos, you can go to MF Gilly on Facebook and Instagram, and you will find my pages there. And you can follow my shop page with uh, at Insidious Studios on Facebook as well, which it's will cute. all be underneath <laughs> yeah, we'll, the video. We'll link it. We'll put all the links underneath. The one I, I think one of my well, I, I checked out your artwork obviously, but um, I, I love that one that you have with the I don't know is it an eagle that blue that eye on the yeah. eagle was fucking ridiculous. Um, all right, so I. And uh, there's a tattoo <laughs> forum that I'm part of, and it's a bunch of tattoo artists critique other tattoo artists' work. And I've always been afraid to upload my tattoos on there because I know everybody gets shredded on there. And wow. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to post Jesus. this uh, wow. this eagle Boy. tattoo and, and as my first post because you can't comment on anything until you post something. Mm-hmm. That's it, that's the rules that they have. So I did. I posted it, and I knew right off the bat everyone was going to chew me apart for the blue eyes because the blue eyes is always done on everything. You put it blue eyes on every animal portrait. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure, that's all oh, blue eyes. Oh, what do you do? You know, I'm like, listen, man, that's what the client freaking wanted. I tried to make the eyes look like they were legit glowing. Yeah, like that's, what it, that's what I liked about it because it wasn't just like a blue eye. Uh, like right. it just it I, Was the tattoo black and white? Yeah. Yeah, there was and some I, it bl- made the there's, eyes pop. Yeah, there's some more blue in it be, at the bottom, like behind the like glowing through a rose. Um, but I did not want to do the traditional like, oh, I'm just gonna give this eagle some blue eyes. You know, I tried to make it look a little bit. Like it oh, it's glowing. It's, yeah, I thought yeah. it looked fucking well. Right. Hey, I'll leave a comment and say it looked I'll dope as it. shit. So salute to the blue eye. Thank the you, blue eyed yes. eagle. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. But there was a... So there's a part in that tattoo where I had like this wispy break of the skin. Most of the comments were actually from that. They said it was too thick. Mm. Shouldn't go as thick. But they all said my texture and everything else was great. I was like, all right, that's cool. Hey, you can take a couple of knocks as long yeah. as they weren't like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Man. yeah. I mean, I when they told me like, you need to slow down, take your time. I could tell you rush the top of the tattoo. I could tell this part isn't saturated as good. And I'm like, yep, I knew all this. I just needed somebody else to tell me. Yeah. Because then it kind of pushes me to slow down. And I feel like since that, since uh, a couple other tattoo artists I've heard tell me like, yeah, dude, if you just slow down more and concentrate 
your tattoo work will get better. And I've already started to see it progressing in the last couple months. At least I feel. Yeah. Well, and like I like I said, because I've obviously we've been friends forever, so I got I've got to see your work from early stages because an ex of mine has a lot of Gilly's work on her. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I saw from like stuff like that he did there to what he's doing now, and it's. It's, yeah, it's mind incredible. blowing. It's dude. incredible. Like, yeah, I've had people at work. Um, I actually had, uh, he's like our, I don't know. He does a lot of shit at work. Anyways, he came up to me. He goes, Hey, where do you get your tattoos done? He's like, my wife, I won't use her name. My wife, she's not in Florida. She wants to get another tattoo. She used to go and soap to so-and-so out this way. Mm-hmm. It's like, but she loves your tattoos. Yeah. I love your tattoos. Where do you get them done? And I was like, <laughs> Adam Gilly. <laughs> oh yeah. Burlington. I uh a client of mine that I'm currently working on one of her tattoos, she was in Vegas. And she's like, Adam, I had so many people stop me and just compliment the portrait of this girl's face that you did and it's super awesome. One girl said she's gonna even hit you up for tattoos. She lives out there. I'm like, all right, cool. Next thing you know, that girl hits me up. Hey, I really love your work. I saw some girl out in Vegas with a piece, and I'm just curious on what you charge, this and that. So I told her all my information, and she's like, all right, cool. But she never, like, actually booked an appointment, but did say, like, she started following me um, and does want to come up here eventually to get work done. To get it. Yeah. You're Do you damn think good, man. Are portraits the hardest thing? I feel like that's such a... Like if someone comes oh, yeah. with their grandma, it's no, like grandma's, you know, grandma. grandmas would be the easiest child or it's <clears throat> it's the babies, the soft faces are the hardest because yeah. <clears throat> um I don't know because you it's all about being you have to take your time and work very slowly at portraits. I figured this out. I did a a Heath Ledger Joker portrait and it took me fourteen hours to do the portrait. And it was just, you know, that big. Yeah. Not that Which big. But just the detail yeah, in just, it or? No, just to the consistency and not fucking up like any intricate little. Make uh, sure the eyes are symmetrical. Yeah, and, all that. And, the lips, mm-hmm. and then the shading, like in the big open areas where it's smooth. Like that's where the time consuming part is, is like the cheek, like the same stroke to make sure you're not leaving streaks in the cheek. Like yeah. The tattoo needles. Um there, after following so many really good tattoo artists and seeing how much time it takes them to accomplish the good portraits that they do, I'm like, okay, so I can take 14 hours to do a portrait and <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. okay. Because when it took me the first session with that Joker and it was seven hours in, I felt like I should have had this done a long time ago. I mean, it's not that big. Yeah. And then that night I seen this tattoo artist do this flawless portrait of Kanye West. Um, And I was like, damn, he said it took him 12 hours to complete it. And it was probably about like this big, you know, on the thigh. And I'm like, all right, now I don't feel so bad. Um, I'm I'm on the right path, I feel. Slow and slow, we'll get get the job done. Yeah, just, I mean, doing them, right? I mean... I mean, that that could be with any art, though. Just gaining the experience. Yeah. Um, I've been slowing down a lot with my work lately, concentrating on uh, being darker. Damn dogs. Darn dogs are chewing people. Dogs, jeez. Damn dogs. Uh, (laughs) What are they barking at? This is a gorilla podcast. But yeah, (laughs) yeah, portraits take a hot minute. That's for sure. Yeah. I would assume. I mean,. So like you said, you learn like so like how do you get do you just kind of go in? This is like the price per hour, and it could take up. I mean, like you said, this takes fourteen hours. But as you get better, then you like charge more, and it takes you less time. Is that kind of um, how you do it? I mean, I don't know. I've never really thought about that. I'm just listen. I charge this much an hour. Um, I will tell you right off the bat, it's going to be longer than eight hours. You know, yeah. I'm almost thinking about changing my rates to full day and half day sessions. So full day would be like between twelve or thirteen. So you like, do you like doing the bigger pieces? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Like 
I am instead so, of just whipping out fucking shit out of a book. Yeah, I don't. Fifty bucks. See you later. If I do, if I do small tattoos, it's only mainly on friends and stuff. Sometimes yeah. I'll take like uh, some people that reach out through the Insidious page, and they want something simple. I'll either throw it to Trevor or I'll throw it to me. Um, and I'll just stick them in before an appointment, or if I know I'm gonna be done with an appointment before. A certain time yeah i'll stick them there but i generally do one tattoo a day because it takes me it's an all-day process yeah tattoos are no like come in and just put it on and be done like people want to come in after four o'clock when they get off work to get a tattoo right. i'm like in a perfect world sure but i know how i work and it's going to take me at least an hour or two to design but then it. you're there all night yeah if I'm you like, come in at four dude yeah, we're not if, getting done if they till... come in at four we're not getting started till five sometimes six and then we're going to be working for six, seven hours, maybe even eight. Yeah. Like, we're not getting out till midnight. Some, you know, yeah. maybe even yeah, one in the crazy. morning. I'm like, I'm not doing that. And then that guy's got to be up for work the next well, day. Well, it's scheduled months out, right? I mean, yeah. usually. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, take the day off, you know? I know. I that's, that's If you kind can, of, I mean, right. that's kind of the goal, right? Uh, if you want a tattoo bad enough, you will make time to get the tattoo. At the end of the day, tattoos are not uh, a need. It's a want. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, become a more uh, uh, luxurious thing, I guess, because it's good work at the end of the day. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want good work, it's it's a more of a luxury. That's the way I'm seeing it. Like, you got to take mm-hmm. it serious. And some people don't. They just think that it should be like, get me in now. It's like, dude, if somebody's going to get you in today, you're not getting the quality of work you want. Yeah, and that's fine because then you're helping somebody else grow as an artist. And, and also, it, it depends on what you're they're getting to. If yeah. they're just getting, you know, a name and a yeah. date or some, or you know, something easy. Yeah. But no, when you're like, oh no, I got this, and I want this on my back, and <laughs> I need this done in seven hours. <laughs> I want this huge tiger portrait on my arm. Can you one you day? Have, do you have time? I'll to sit sleep? all day. I'll sit. Please me. I'll then. sit. Well, usually I, I'll get people going. Hey, I want to get some work done do you have time this week you know like <laughs> no, <laughs> no i'm sorry i don't it's it's not amazon yeah pretty much um you probably get a lot of people that want like a sleeve like or a back piece done like that day right no you get this done no i don't are they pretty understanding they're pretty understanding the clients that i deal with now are pretty awesome um most of them are all they understand yep they come in with their idea they usually give me artistic freedom to go from there with it, you know. Um, at the end of the day, I only post what I enjoy to doing. And uh, I don't really, if I do tattoos I don't like, I tell my clients that I'm not posting it. I'm like, just oh, so okay. you know. That's cool. I'm not posting this. Really? I'm like, yeah, because then everybody else is going to want this. And I'm not doing that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> do this. Well, that's, no. that's a cool thing, though, too, is now that you've, establish yourself as a better a better artist and that you ha- that your time your the money is worth the time it's you can say, say yeah, stuff I, like that yeah i can mm-hmm. uh i could be picky and choosy it's nice to be that way and um be able to do what i enjoy doing because at the end of the day the dream is to just honestly like i just want to be able to tattoo what i love tattooing yeah. Uh, I want to look forward to every project, not look forward to some, you know? And then yeah, the other one's like, sure. God damn, I have this today. Uh, this is going to suck. I'm going to be here all day doing this. You know, I don't want that feeling. I want to yeah, be no. like, oh, hell yeah, I got this person coming in. Let's get this tattoo done. <laughs> you know, there's so many fun projects that I have out there, including this one, that uh, I'm just waiting <laughs> to finish. So, are you a. Uh Music headphone guy while you're tattooing. There's a lot of uh, people out there. I feel that like wear we got headphones. Kill Tony. Always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have the TV on usually. Yeah. Um. So my go like I feel bad for my buddy Trevor that comes into work on his clients because I always had the same shows on. It's either uh, it's always sunny, Trailer Park Boys, uh, Shorzy, uh, Letter Kenny, New Girl, uh, Parks and Recreation. It's always like it's always good all comedy. Those. Yeah, it's always good comedy. No, but that's like it's seriously perfect. Yeah. It is seriously perfect because there was only one, at one point I wanted to punch Adam in the face, and it's when he hit my elbow. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't even fucking like you right now. Yeah, 
But otherwise, yeah, like, you know, Always Sunny was on and I'm just watching it. And I'm like, all right, I'll get I'll get through it. (laughs) I feel like as a, I guess, a person getting tattooed, I'd prefer to be watching TV Mm -hmm. um, because it gets my mind off of what's going on. Uh, As the artist, I mean, uh, I feel I kind of feel I would love to listen to music while I work. Like I'd love just pop in headphones and just go to town. But I can't because I always feel like I'm not engaging in the client. Yeah, right. And it's kind of putting that barrier in between. Oh, 100 percent. That's like the more customer service side of it. Honestly, it's (laughs) it's more of an intimate feel. And if someone's kind of checked out, they're doing the work. And yeah. But and that's to, also fine. Like, I don't need you to talk to me while yeah. you do my. No, I mean, that's I, just, that's you just whatever you need to do. Just just her, do it. Just do get it right. her done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't help myself. I, I always got to talk. And I mean, I'll be silent sometimes while I'm working on people and they'll be on their phone as I'm working. And that's fine. Uh, but sometimes when there's like a lot of dead air, I'm like, so what do you do for a living? Like, how did you find yeah. out about my shop? How'd you find out about me? I, you know, and sometimes it's pretty interesting to hear them say like, oh, I found you uh, because I saw this guy's artwork from this place or you tattooed my friend or my family. And I'm like, holy shit, I haven't heard that name in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people are different. Some people get in an Uber and just sit there. Some people like to talk to the driver. So yeah, everybody's, everybody's different. Same with yeah. the tattoos. Sometimes people just want to sit there and. I think uh, silent and get tattooed. I think if I'm going to listen to the headphones, it's more if I'm at a convention because it's so loud. There's so much Mm -hmm. going on that at that point, it don't even matter if me and the client talk or not, or even look eye to eye. Like I'm dealing with this. Well, um, and then, then time's limited at the conventions, too. It's not too limited. I mean, I've seen artists work well past 11 o'clock at night finishing tattoos they generally want you out of there, I think, by like midnight. Um, How does that work? You break down a convention. No, you so, you leave your shit up. Um, so it's a it's a week. But like, do you have you have a, a plan before you even go to the convention? Right, you have a client and yeah. a plan. Yeah. Okay. Some, so you kind of just go there and execute that yeah. plan. You don't have to. You don't have to have appointments for the convention. You could literally take people who are walking through and want tattoos. Walk ups is what we like to call them. Yeah. Um, but I personally like to book appointments to do tattoos that I love. So that way, when people are walking through, they see what I love doing. Yeah. And they're a fan. <clears throat> if they're a fan, then they know what they're going to get if they want to get tattooed. I don't want to do a set of dice on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, I heart Japanese <laughs> writing down the Japanese neck. Japanese writing. <laughs> like, I've, I've d- done. Oh, the, the, yeah. Come here. I've done the uh, the conventions <laughs> where I had to do walk ups to make money to make up for the booth renting the needles the ink everything I bought. Mm. Um, but if I break even, I don't even care. It's not about making money at the convention. I just want people to watch me. Just tattoo. getting your art out there and yeah, yeah. The last tattoo convention I did was in Milwaukee last year. No, two years ago. Um. And it was a blast. I wasn't going to do it. I was like, man, I don't have money. I'm focused. Like Insidious had just opened. I'm like, no, I need to do it. I need to do the tattoo convention. Fuck it. So I did it. And it was a good thing I did it. I had a lot of recognition through other tattoo artists that would just come up to the to me while I'm working on my clients. Like, Holy shit, that looks really good. That made me feel good. Cause right, I'm like, yeah. This is a first. Because you're amongst your peers, right? Yeah, I'm like, this guy's a really good tattoo artist, and he's stopping and saying, my work's good. Cool. Um, and then I entered in those pieces in the contest. I had uh, one second place, two first place awards, and um, I met a guy there who ended up moving to Minnesota. And then I did the Minnesota convention last July, and tattooed that guy because he moved out there. Oh, no shit. So he's like, yeah, I found yeah. you through uh, the Milwaukee convention. Saw your work in here. So I booked the appointment with you. I'm like, fuck it. And he let me do whatever I wanted. And I did a spider with a skull, like a crazy-ass-looking spider crawling out of the skull's mouth type of thing. And he goes, 
Do this thing so badass, but my mom is going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> she hates spiders so much. I'm like, man, like, why didn't you tell me when I was drawing this on you? And I don't think like, anyone likes spiders. Yeah, no, he's no, like, fuck those no, things. I think it looks badass. I'm like, hey, as long as you're cool with it, that's all that matters. But I didn't know your mom hated spiders. <laughs> I might have went a different route, but it's cool. She'll be all right. I can't yeah. wait to get the Hawaiian punch guy full back tattoo. Oh, yeah, yes. I'm busting out of your back. Oh, yeah. 10% fruit juice, motherfucker. <laughs> fruit juice. Yeah. How dare oh. you? <laughs> Sean, you just got Please the one, it. right? Yep. Besides, you're going to get the right hand, really? man. I thought you had more than that. Nope, just, that is it. Just my shitty. Oh my you need God. a back piece. Just my shitty PMA tattoo that I, I got. I always joke. At a uh, fucking tattoo party. Yeah. Oh. I think we've all had a tattoo from a tattoo party. I haven't. You haven't? I don't. You don't I have either? no other no. excuse of Damn. any of my other shitty I tattoos. Except I know a lot of them. Yeah. I know a few people who got some shitty tattoos at a tattoo party. This one on my wrist was. It was such an homage to the Soulfly <laughs> symbol because yeah. Alex got Soulfly <laughs> symbol right there, and I liked that idea, so I just drew my own. <laughs> well, our so former uh, co-host of this, um, old Francis, trust. He wanted trust. He saw this one that said "trust no" with the number one, oh. and he's like, "I want it writ out, written out." Yeah, well, he's he, he, trust, the, the tattoo artist no called his wife, no and he's like, "Is no one one word or two? And she's fucking like, two "It's one." Oh, so he had shit. trust Noonie across his fucking right above his cock. Oh I can't God. even <laughs> spell. I can't even spell. Like I'm a fucking idiot. I cannot spell. He had to have seen it written out and go, "That doesn't look Noonie. right." Noonie. It says Noonie. Trust Noonie. Even the tattoo. I'm pretty sure that's the name of our very first, first podcast. podcast. Trust Noonie. Is Trust Noonie. I bet God you. God damn it, Francis. The artist is probably baked out of his mind. He's like, I think that's how no one spelled, man. Well, he yeah, called his wife. Right. He's like, I don't think that's right. And he's Clearly. like, let me call my wife. She looked in the dictionary. Clearly, it's one she's word. fucking brilliant. <laughs> she is on crack, too. She's brilliant. <laughs> Trust Noonie. Yep, this bag full of paint uh, said it's one word. <laughs> yeah, it's all written out. It like, might look a little weird. I can't even fucking spell, and I would have looked at that word and been like, mm, I can't spell. I can't spell cat noonie. if you gave me the C and the T. Yeah, I'm pretty bad with <laughs> spelling, too. Like, don't expect me to spell. I misspelled a word on somebody once. Um... That was a rough day. No regrets? No, no. <laughs> it was laughed. Not one letter? No. I oh, added no. an extra ED. It was laughed ed. Oh, oh well, they laughed it. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Sometimes they laughed I, it. I've laughed at it before. I, I have laughed and then I have laughed it. My, my favorite thing is looking at the bad tattoos and it's like your, but spelled out you are. Yeah. Instead of oh, your, oh my god! <laughs> One of the funniest ones I've saw. This guy, he he went in. You yeah. know, I want this piece done. So this guy had a tattoo right here. So he wanted it down here. So the guy tattooed it down here, but he included the nipple. Oh my <laughs> gosh! What? I think I see. So it was oh, a chest why? tattoo, yeah. and it had the nipple. <laughs> and he's like, "I want this tattooed no, here." As, so he as, tattooed it, and then he tattooed the nipple. The as the person <laughs> receiving the tattoo, when you put the when you put it there and said, "How's this look?" I would have said, "Why the fuck?" Well, is apparently, the he didn't Why do is that. Why the nipple there? Yeah, I don't think he. Re- so fuck that guy. I don't feel bad for him and his no, extra nipple. Hilarious. He should have never brought in somebody else's tattoo to get mm-hmm. copied. Or nipple. He copied it. T- <laughs> literally, <laughs> his picture to the T. Yeah. He got exactly what he wanted. Yeah. Hey, oh, I, bro. I wanted that this. nipple was in there. Oh man! <laughs> Tell me you don't want the tit. I don't want to do. What do you want me to do? I think I've seen <laughs> that one before. It's. I think it's a Batman tattoo or something with the penguin yeah. and a nice titty. It might be. That's titty. Or or when you know you're my angel, but they spell it angle. Angle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen that one, and it was like grandma with like her bag. She looked like an owl. Oh my god. <laughs> Poor grandma. I love angle. shitty tattoos though. Like, I mean, I like I like good tattoos way better, but shitty tattoos, they're they funny. make me chuckle. They're funny. Yeah, I was gonna um, tattoo my dick once. <laughs> And I couldn't keep it hard enough to. to oh to no! It just got soft. A fucking did not want any part of it. As soon as I get that machine, I do close, a tattoo on my dick. I was like, oh. 
Oh, gonna, you were going to do story. it yourself. Yeah, I was going to just hold on to it. Oh. To myself. I was going to do it because I had glow in the dark ink at the time. This is back when I was doing it out of the house. And I was just going to tattoo something you'd only see in the black light, but not in person. Because I didn't <laughs> want like anybody to legit see a tattoo. <laughs> My dick's tattooed, full disclosure. Nice. That's it says hilarious. W-Y. No. uh and then when I get hard, it says, welcome to Jamaica. Have now a nice day. Now you're just being on the fun. <laughs> He's an idiot. Yeah. Don't let him lie to you. I mean, you could stick and poke <laughs> W-Y. I, I Maybe a little bit. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, and then I just, welcome to Jamaica. Have a nice day. That's, yeah. that's like, the, I want two M's on my what, M on each butt <laughs> cheek. So when I move it says, mom. And when I do a cartwheel, it says, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at my headstand. That is amazing. Wow. <laughs> Wow. 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 Just turn to Owen Wilson. (laughs) Wow. Wow. (laughs) Have you ever seen, remember the the videos that that, uh, this dude would make where he'd have like cereal or macaroni and cheese and he'd feed it to the TV? (laughs) And it'd be like, people always turn away at the moment (laughs) you get the spoon. Or the one dude that hit it, like Ryan Gosling. (laughs) Just (laughs) slapped him. Perfect timing. (laughs) Boy, I miss Vine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love. Why did? Why videos. is that not a thing? It's what TikTok happened? now. Well, I know, but what happened with Vine? I don't understand it. All I don't the, know. It's so good. All the big Viners got Viners. LA deals. Is that what they're called? Viners. Viners. Yeah. Viners. They all got like uh, development deals. I was just watching a video. Wasn't that where the spoon on his eyes? Paul. Paul Brothers. Paul Brothers. That was. Then they went to YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Oh, I miss. I all those hated those videos. fucking guys so much more than I. I'm not a fan of them now. I don't like them now either. Um, but Shout back out to then, their hustle, though. I mean, yeah, they they know how to make their money. I guess being those uh, doing what they're doing, but they were doing it for years, making it big off mm-hmm. YouTube. My uh, my son and his friend, his friend, they would always watch him. Logan Paul. I'm like, what are you guys watching? Oh, Logan and Jake Paul. I'm like, these guys look like a bunch of freaking douchebags. <laughs> they, they are. They are. Yeah. <laughs> And then they grow up to be what they're doing now. And I'm like, douchebags. Well, well the problem bags, I'm having, but... too, is like our daughter watches the videos and she watches a lot of these like family videos where the fucking I'm like, this isn't reality. OK, yeah. the kids don't run the fucking show. They don't show the kids getting grounded, yeah, disciplined. No. Like, mm-hmm. I just this is not fucking reality. I just want to like maybe that's it. That's going to have to be my TikTok. We're just going to record our daily life of me yelling at the kids, telling them to go fuck yeah. themselves. Actual so reality. Goddamn fucking chores, you little shitheads. Yeah. And then maybe. Because what yeah, the I fuck? Yeah, I think you need to come these kids at a different are, angle. These kids, what? <laughs> come at a different <laughs> angle. Well, yeah, don't, I mean, yeah. I mean, do what you want to do. Oh, no. Come Off at it. Rails. Come at it with a different angle. You got to come at it at a different angle. I mean, you can come. <laughs> Yes. That's a great way to end this won't podcast, be with me, but... honestly. <laughs> Coming at him from yep, a different you... angel. <laughs> yes. He can't even get the fucking thing open. I'm here. He's I'm... fighting with it. <laughs> well, thank you, Adam, for on, coming down. Again, give out your shit. Yeah, man. Um, feel free to follow uh, Repentance Band on... Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Insidious Studios on our Facebook, on Facebook, Instagram, MF Gilly also on Facebook and Instagram. I don't do the TikTok. I don't do Twitter. I don't do uh, Snapchat or any of those. I don't really like social media. Yeah. So I just stick with those two. Good. That's it's a healthy life. Social without social media. It is. Right Thanks on. again for coming on, bro. Hey, thank really you appreciate this. Me. We're going to do one more to sign it off. We will. Uh, we'll be back again. Better give him some rum chata. I'm getting it. I'm getting the chata. You know what? No. Look at He's manning it up. He's got whiskey. What do you mean? I've got so much drinks. You say I'm not a man? <laughs> it's a <laughs> plethora a of cocktails. Uh, you say I've got so much drinks. Plethora? He does have a plethora. <laughs> I've got a plethora. He's got, got a, a fucking old fashioned, some whiskey, some he's water. He's good. He's good. We've been, we've been getting our boy fed. So for Jeff, for Kayla, for... <laughs> Adam Gilly, I am Sean. Thanks again for coming in and tuning in with us. We'll be back next week for another Foot and Field episode of The Gentleman's Den. Stop See you me. then. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Oh.